Straight Line Designs is a one-of-a-kind workshop with a bit of a Pinocchio soul. Almost every day, Judson Beaumont and his eight full-time, six full-time, eight full-time people. People. <laughs> Uh, crafts, designs, and constructs some daring and dazzling furniture and objects that wiggle and wobble and inspire. It is my pleasure to welcome Judson Beaumont back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thanks for having me back. How many elves do you have? Well, with my, I guess with my wife and I, it would be eight people. Okay. Time. Yep. And I said, a bit of a Pinocchio soul. Well, I guess I kind of got known for, I started being doing straight line design stuff in the beginning. And uh, then that whole Roger Rabbit movie, and I just love cartoons, and I started mm -hmm. bending all my furniture. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is I got known as a children's furniture designer. So it kind of, I wasn't a designer, I was always known as a children's furniture designer. Not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Not that you're uh, I'm not, not designing anything. children's furniture, That's but right. you desire, design whimsical, wonderful mm -hmm. uh, furniture for adults, practical. Right. And uh, about this Beetlewood. Mm -hmm. Well, that was an interesting thing, too. I always look at my projects or in my business as like a school project, like the teacher or your instructor gives you something to do. Mm -hmm. And I was approached to work with pine beetlewood. Someone said, hey, Joe, we got this pine beetlewood. Could you make something out of it? And I had no idea what they were talking about. I said, well, pine beetle, you know, I kind of knew about it, but I didn't really know. So they said, well, we're going to bring some wood over to your studio. And I said, fine, bring, you know, drop it off. And it turned out to be two by fours. It was all dimensional lumber. It was right. like two by sixes, two by eights, two by fours. I said, what am I supposed to do with this? And they said, well, you're the designer. You come up with it. And I started to examine the 2 by 4s and I saw all the, the stain, the blue, the gray, all the, the weird-looking finishes in it, and I started just cutting out the parts that I liked. Right. And that's when they, the whole making wooden stones and tumbling well, stones. You gave yeah. me some of those, the pebbles. It's the pebbles. Or the stones, that's and they're it. beautiful. I was, yeah. I was shocked. Well, there's mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Not the pebbles. I bought the, uh, the pine stones. It the rock probably cabinet. has a name. The rock cabinet. What's the funny, river rock cabinet. What's funny about these pieces is people look at them and they go, "Those are real stones." I said, "No, they're wood." And as soon as they, mm -hmm. as soon as they touch it, then they realize that it's wood yeah, and then they love it. Is, your work is very tactile. Yes, yeah. it's part of it, yeah. isn't it? You mm -hmm. you want to touch mm -hmm. it in the stones. Like it, if you just have one of yeah. those, mm -hmm. uh, you, it can be your worry stone. Exactly. It could be. Mm -hmm. Have you done whole walls? I'm starting to work with it again. I've, I've, I went from the stones, and then I started looking at it as, as I've, uh, I have started cutting it all up, and I started splitting it with an axe, and it almost looked like bricks or flagstone. And I started doing walls out of them. I saw that at the mm -hmm. design show That's when right. you were at the design show, and yeah. it looks just like a wall of. Yeah. It looks like it just looks like cut stone. Cut stone, or, but it's wood. Yeah, it's all the pine beetle wood. Yeah. But the magic to that was you you punch one of the... And one of the drawers would pop. Yeah, a shelf would, would and pop a out. a shelf yeah. pops out. Yeah. That was a, It was mm -hmm. a huge hit at the show. We had no idea how. We, you know, we did it as kind of a... Wouldn't it be cool if these bricks just popped open like little secret compartments? Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody, the, just the look on everybody's faces was just unbelievable. They were well, like exactly. freaked out. And is it, what do you use it for? I would say, you know, if you had a... Um, if you wanted to just pull out shelves to put a vase on or storage, okay. or wine, or it could be anything. Maybe sure. just a secret hideaway. Why not? Exactly. Well, it takes us back to the movies, doesn't exactly. it? It's mm -hmm. like someone said it's like a Harry Potter slash James Bond kind of a wall. Exactly, you know? but you could do a whole wall oh, in totally. a house, totally. a beautiful wall, mm -hmm. and then if you just wanted to hit a uh, button, yeah. hit a button yeah. it comes out and you mm -hmm. put a beautiful object on it. I could see it at restaurants, hotel mm -hmm. lobbies, where they want to change it up every once in a while. So be kind is of this what expensive now? No, that's the ironic thing is you basically go down to the uh, the lumber yards. It's just it's a, a dollar eighty, and, and there's lots of it. There's lots of it, and it's funny. I'm picking through the ones that I want, and all the other carpenters and woodworker mm -hmm. guys are trying to avoid them. I'm grabbing the, the weird right. color yeah. with the weird colors. Yeah. Can you uh, make a floor out of beetle coat? What is it too soft? It's too soft. I mean, a pine a pine floor might be good for like a cabin or cabin. something, but mm -hmm. it's too soft. There's some at the convention center, isn't there? That's fur. I believe that's, that's fur. Okay. I wish it was pine beetle wood. <laughs> well, you know, it would be politically exactly. correct to have exactly. the odd little wall, but mm -hmm. no, so it's all fur yeah. over there. Okay, mm -hmm. so the hollow chair. Yes. Um, again, I was playing around with the idea. Um, this is actually kind of interesting because I'm not a computer person at all. I, I, I can do emails. That's about all I'm good at doing. Uh, and I've got these young people working for me now that come out of these universities and colleges with computer skills with, uh, they call it CNC, computer pneumatic right. routers. And what mm -hmm. they can do is they can CNC and cut out shapes for me. And what I was interested with this piece was, is you know, a, a, an armchair is always kind of bulky and heavy and it t looks like it takes up a lot of room and a lot of space. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could eliminate 90% of the bulk of a chair? And so that's what we did. So it's basically 
671 pieces interlocking, clicked together that make that chair. Okay. And it can also take your weight because it's completely empty underneath it. Well, the one I saw, the picture mm. I saw had books in there. Yeah, you can put books in it. You can put your, I, there's a picture with my dog in there. There's uh, anything. It's, it's endless. <laughs> it's, An interesting it's, dog house. Exactly. What I was saying, it's not, what, it's not about the chair. It's what you put into it. Exactly. It's not about the chair. It's mm -hmm. what you put into it. Yeah. Uh, but there's no stuffing except in the cushion. Just the it's, cushion in the back. So it's yeah. comfortable. Oh, it's very comfortable. Yeah. It's comfortable, mm -hmm. but inside, because so many people live in tiny apartments exactly. now. Exactly. And, and so, Well, there's why talk not? about putting a mattress in. You could pull it out, have a bed, and then slide it back in. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So it's sort of individual, whatever sure. you want to put or in. Sure. Or you could just put your, when the when company's coming and you mm -hmm. haven't exactly spiffed up. Exactly. You just open the chair, yeah. throw it all in, yeah, exactly. close the chair, mm -hmm. and no one knows. Exactly. How, what goes on in your brain when you design something like a hollow chair? Where, where does the idea come from? Well, I've always, I mean, what I loved about going to art school, Emily Carr, my old school, is it, it taught me how to look at things differently. Things don't have mm -hmm. to be the way they are. And I'm always questioning. Every time I look at something, I say, why is it like that? Why do we, you know, why is, why is things the way they are? Mm -hmm. And I, I always try to change it up a little bit and just uh, play a little bit. And, and I also like to people, when they look at my stuff, they have to almost stop and then, take a second look and go, am I really looking at what I think I'm looking at? <laughs> exactly. So it's, that, it's playing mm -hmm. with the, the illusion too. And, sure, yeah. and it's fun. Yeah. Uh, well, Steve Jobs, the master, exactly. the late Steve mm -hmm. Jobs, uh, the troublemaker, mm -hmm. the person who uh, changed took chances, the world, really. Took chances, tried Changed the world, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, very, very cool. much so. Mm -hmm. Uh, did he inspire you in any way, Jobs? Not or? so much. I mean, the, the, I liked him because he bought Pixar. He owned Pixar, and he put a lot of money into the the cartoons, the animation, uh, without making a dime. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was he put a lot of investment into it before it finally paid off. Uh, so I like that side of him. He he took something that was just sort of like, well, it's kind of cute. These little computer. Uh, images and uh, pushed it even farther than I yes. would imagined. Yeah. I heard a great story about uh, Steve Jobs, and I hope it's true. I think it's true. Yeah. Uh, he re was recruiting the president of Pepsi Cola mm. to come and work for him, mm -hmm. and he showed up and asked the president of Pepsi one question: mm -hmm. Do you want to make uh, colored sugar water for the rest of your life, yeah. or do you want to change the world? Exactly. I hope that's a true story, because it's a great story, isn't it? It's a great it? story, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the president of Pepsi, or the CEO of Pepsi, mm -hmm. went to work for Jobs, and the rest is history. Yeah. We'll have to Google that to make sure I haven't told a fib. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Little Black Dresser, one of my favorites, as yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Now, that one, again, I was thinking about why does furniture need legs? I mean, you know, everything's, you know, again, playing around with that idea, and I was starting to do, like, hanging, like, you know, paper bags. I even made like kind of a uh, puppet kind of a piece of furniture that was all on cables and moving around. And I, I came up with the idea of the dress. And then I asked one of the, the girls in the shop, I said, well, what color should it be? And I said, well, what? and I sort of said, well, I guess it should be black or something. They go, yeah, like the little black dresser. And yeah. it just hit right there. As soon to. as we said it, we knew Ask we had Coco it. Ask Coco Chanel. Exactly. And every woman has to have a little black dress we have made them in, in red the closet. Too. Yeah. You have made we red made dresses. Red, yeah, so. Well, that's a very popular yeah. color. And it's done, it's the only piece that I've ever designed. Usually I have uh, women and moms and, and uh, ladies calling me up about the furniture. And this is the first time I've actually had men calling me going, I'd like mm. to buy that for my wife and as an anniversary gift. And, so oh, it's great. Really, yeah. And it works. There's it's, actual drawers. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's, just a hanging piece. It's They're a totally piece functional. of art. It's yeah. totally functional, yeah. and you can keep all your undies mm -hmm. in there, yeah. or your jewelry, or your whatever, because it's good sized. Yeah. yeah. And it hangs on a pole across. Hangs on a pole, right? or we also have a, a coat hook, and you can actually hang it off a post onto the wall, too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, these logs mm -hmm. were at the design show, yeah. and they really caught my eye mm -hmm. from afar. I, I was watching They're you going magical. by, and you stopped. And I know. And I went, I said, got her. <laughs> got her. You, yeah. you did get me. Yeah. I know. So tell me about these. Again, it's the pine beetle wood, and uh, so they're not real logs at all, obviously. They're just they're just two by fours, and I've split them and mitered them all together, glued mm -hmm. them together. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool? I, I used to just pour just clear resin on top of them with no right. lights in them at all. And I had a piece of plexiglass mirror, and I flipped it upside down, and I had a little router, a little hand tool router in my hand, and I started routering out rings of a tree. So I actually hand router each one of them myself. And, and uh, you know, I always tell people it takes me 100 years to make one, but no, actually, it takes me about a half an hour. <laughs> That'll shoot the price yeah. up. But I, I love the idea of it. It's just completely free-formed. I don't, uh, you know, I, you know, and if, if someone startles me or the phone rings, well, that's just part of the, the image of the rings of the tree. Right, so. and how are they lit up? Just a low wattage uh, fluorescent bulb inside. Inside. And basically, when I router through the mirrored plexi, that's where the light shows through. So, mm -hmm. And then I put colored resin on top, 
port, uh, color resin underneath. So during when the lights are off, it's one color, and when the lights are on, it changes to another okay, color. Okay, and the idea is you sit on these, you put your cocktail on these, yeah. you put them outside in the summers uh, yes. as uh, patio pieces. Patio yeah. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was one in the corner just because totally. you want a conversation piece, somebody to say. I think it's kind of like what is it, that? Yeah, you, you you know, I had I took a couple home and I had them in my living room, and I kind of like the idea of with all the lights down low and they, they were little beacons, a little lights around the living room, and they and they gave such a wonderful glow off them that they mm -hmm. kind of warmed up the room, and made it look. Oh, for cool. sure, because yeah. at night, and they'd, mm -hmm. be, they'd be magical. It's like yeah. your night light. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good by you, I wonder if you can go as far as to do solar. Yeah, the, the only thing with solar is it's not as bright, but, no, we have looked into that as well, because, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't take a lot for these to light up. If it's in complete darkness, yeah, they do. They are quite bright, so right. solar would work. And yeah. they're sturdy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if Grandma sits on them. Yeah, grandma can sit on them. Yeah. You know, plump <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> Can sit on the log. Exactly. She won't. No, she won't. She'll sit in that chair. Well, it's funny. People <laughs> think they're hot. Like they think like a like a stove. Like the orange one, they think it's like a stove. You know, mm -hmm. is this gonna be hot? But I love the way people touch them. And I also like the idea of the the roughness of the pine beetle wood. That kind of rough mm -hmm. gray, bluish color. And then this completely slick surface. Sure. So it's a balance of two different materials. And one has to have an axe. Yes. If you could afford the yeah. whole forest. Yeah. Is that the idea? Like, uh, so you have a. I don't know what you call yeah. it in the art world, yeah. but you know, an event mm -hmm. in the corner of your home or yeah. something mm -hmm. because the axe, uh, you don't want to sit on that one. Well, that's funny. That axe is what we split all the wood with. People think we have this machine that splits all the, the, the wood mm -hmm. when we're making our pine beetle walls. And no, I just took our axe and I made a rubber mold off it and poured it in resin. And then the idea behind that was it was going to light up because, you know, anything with clear resin, if you put a bulb or any kind of light near it, it right. blows right through it. So it's kind of a just having fun playing with the idea of like it's not really a log it's not really an axe mm -hmm. it's it's um it's playing with color and right fun. and when it all comes together it's uh dazzling it really yeah. is very well, well like i said it's, it's tricking people they're, they're walking by the booth they're walking by a gallery yeah. and they look at my stuff and they go what am i really is this really what it is and yeah what's so, he up to now exactly How about the turf bench now, I'm always sketching and I'm always coming up with ideas and I think I'd sent your producer, your uh, people here, a whole bunch of sketches and I'm always mm. sketching. Every morning I sketch for an hour and a half. The idea behind these pieces was like it's one surface and then it turns into something else, like my furniture. The one that was in the park would be just the idea of if you could just grab the end of, a, of grass and pull it back up and then sit on it. So again, it's playing with, playing with ideas. You mean pull like a raccoon would? No, just pull. <laughs> No, just basically <laughs> looking you could, for the little mice. If you could tear up the grass and then it would form into something, then oh, that I the see. Idea. So the grass, the, you rip it up. Yeah, only your mind would do this. Well, I mean, that's just the thing. I, I always like to play, and I've never really done an outdoor piece like that. I probably could. I don't know if the uh, the gardener would like to have to cut that, but maybe not. But is it real grass or yeah, it would is be real it grass? I, I saw it as real grass. Is a real you grass. did yes. So, but it would be great for the guests. Oh, I think the summer barbecue. Well, I think it in a you public just park. Rip it up and sit down. <laughs> but I think in a public park, as a sculpture mm -hmm. uh, piece, would mm -hmm. be really neat. So that's a sketch idea, and your split cabinet. Yes. What's that about? Which one is it? The the uh, the crack. It's the one that has is functional, but it looks like it's cut in two. Yeah. Well, you that, like see a, the picture. Yeah. No, like I said, all my pieces have a little bit of quirkiness on them. Yeah. I actually haven't made that piece yet, but. The idea, if it was split wide open like that, but the drawers still work. That's the mm -hmm. key with my stuff. It, it's it's got to look like it doesn't work. It's not functional, but it does. But it does, and yeah. it's an art object mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. Uh, uh, or it's funny, yeah. like the peeing table. Yes, the bad oh, table. That's oh, it's right. both. That's sorry. right. No, everybody calls it something different. Yeah. Well, because it's it's four legs, and one of the legs One's is lifted, lifted up. up. Yeah. So I call it the peeing table. Bad. You call it the bad the table. Ba well, everyone's trying to design a good table. I thought I'd design a bad table. Well, so. of course, because if that table peed on the drapes, <laughs> you'd be in a lot of trouble. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Have a rolled up newspaper on it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, when you uh, go to Salt Spring Island, yes. do you show at the Duffy Gallery the Duffy over Gallery. there? Duffy Gallery. Celia and I and, and Nick are very good friends, and they're very supportive of, of uh, my work and other local artists and... Uh, yeah, it's always a hit over there. Yeah, it's a great gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, sh she showcases some wonderful artists. Yeah. It's it's worth a trip to yeah. Salt and Spring. She's, for sure. she's got such a true passion for it. Like it's mm -hmm. not it's not made up. It's she really loves our stuff and loves and loves promoting us. So I'm great. sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a, a Combers over there too. Mm -hmm. Comber, yeah. Comber. Yeah. 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 Brent. And uh, yeah, there's Peter Parabon and Christian Wu and Kurt Dextel. All oh, there's okay. a really good local bunch of people yeah. right now that's uh, it's very inspiring for me. I've been at it a long time, so I'm one of the old timers. But 
I really admire what's going on in the, the design community. You probably saw it at the show at the, yeah, at the Interior Design it's Show. It's amazing. It's what's amazing. What's going on? Well, thank you, old timer. Thank you.